Hello and welcome once again to Captain Goodspeed Maths. I'm Joe, if you're new around here, and today we are continuing the OCR FSMQ new spec with the exam fast approaching at the time of recording. So, uh, today we're going to talk about iterative sequences, and uh, this is another part of the numerical methods. We have got one more numerical method after this, but the learn objective is to learn how to estimate a route using iterative sequences. Now, this is a bit of a weird one. I'm not 100% comfortable with it, and I know you'll probably see that throughout the video. Um, it, it's just a, a strange one. Uh, I'm not sure how the examiner is going to ask it, because you could go off in completely the wrong direction in this and still be sort of doing the right thing. It's it's just weird. And you'll see what I mean. But uh, the last couple of lessons, we've looked at uh, how to show the presence of a, a route using the interval bisection and decimal search methods. This time we're going to use something that we've seen in a previous lesson under the guise of recurrence relations. If you've missed any of the lessons so far, there is a playlist on the channel homepage uh, under the new specification uh, for you to check out. And uh, there'll be probably about 31 videos in there uh, by the time we're finished. So, um, yeah, we, we called them recurrence relations before. We're calling them iterative sequences this time. They are essentially exactly the same thing. So, um, that just this, we're calling them iterative sequences this time because the book does. Uh, some iterative sequences converge on a limit while others diverge. So we're just going to define those things now. So a sequence or series converges if after a certain number of iterations we see that it tends to a certain value or limit. So that means, you know, after maybe seven or eight uh, iterations of putting numbers into these sequences, we start to see that it's 1.47, 1.48, 1.48, 1.48, and it's converging. It has converged to a limit of 1.48. Divergence is a sequence that doesn't tend to a certain value. So if you had a sequence that was uh, xn plus 1 equals xn uh, plus 2, you're just going to be adding 2 each time to your uh, sequence. So it's never going to tend to a limit. It's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger um, and, and sort of move away from uh, a, a limit, if you like. I guess it tends to infinity, but you, you, you get what I mean. Uh, example one then, use a converging uh, iterative sequence to find a root to two decimal places of the equation x cubed minus x squared minus 1 equals 0. So first we rearrange the equation to get x equals something. Now you might be thinking, well how are we going to do that? There's two x's in there. Well exactly, that's why this is weird. But essentially you want the highest order uh, x on the left hand side and everything else you want to chuck to the right hand side you'll get what I mean here so what I've done there is I've got x cubed is equal to x squared minus 1 then I want x on its own so I'm going to cube root both sides so I get x equals the cube root of x squared minus 1 okay you're thinking what on earth is going on here then we write it as a recurrence relation or iterative sequence. So we're going to say xn plus 1 is equal to the cube root of xn squared minus 1. You sort of see what's happening there. You see that we've got a sequence coming about now. So when you see uh, use an iterative sequence, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to chuck everything over uh, one side. You want to keep one thing, the highest order thing, uh, the highest powered thing, and then you want to cube root it, fourth root it, square root it, whatever. That is what you want to do. So you've got that there. Um, so basically, do this as an exercise now. Pause the video and you will find that using any starting point x naught, so you can pick x naught to be 1, 50, 700, eventually it will converge to an answer of x equals 1.47. Try it with as many values as you want or you feel you have to. The answer converges to 1.47 after a few iterations. So do that now, pause the video, and let me know down in the comments whether it worked. With all that nonsense out of the way then, let's get into example two. So basically, uh, th this, um, this bit is the main answer. 
uh, and then you want to find the convergence point. So, you know, I could have went through and done a load of that myself on the PowerPoint, but what's the point? Get you guys to do it because, you know, me showing that works for three values d doesn't really say anything, does it? You know, I you can type numbers into your calculator as much as I can. It's not really teaching you anything. But example two, sometimes we'll be asked to illustrate something uh, called a cobweb uh, or staircase diagram um, to, to sort of visualise this iterative sequence thing. And I sort of get it, but again, I don't know. A co I've seen no examples of cobweb diagrams, just staircase. I'm going to put the, um, the image from the book in on this video. So to do this, we set y equal to both the left-hand side and right hand side of the equation that we made. So we had this equation here. Um, now we're not thinking about the iterative sequence, we're thinking about this here. So this x equals the cube root of x squared minus 1. So we set y equal to the left hand side of that, i.e. y equals x, and we set y equal to the right hand side of that, i.e. the cube root of x squared minus 1. Uh, and we're going to also call that g of x just because I can't be bothered to write that every time. So you set y equal to the left hand side and you set y equal to the right hand side and then we plot. So there you go. So you get that there. So we've got the line y equals x going up uh, in that red line. Then we've got the orange line which is uh, y equals uh, the cube root of x squared plus 1. Now I would be astounded if they wanted you to plot that uh, without sort of giving you any guidelines, you know, particularly the cube root of x squared plus 1. You can generate some coordinates and get a, a decent feel for it, but you can see there that it does converge. Um, it converges to this point here, basically. Uh, so anyway, what we want to see uh, <laughs> is you go straight up from x naught, so your value of x naught was it seven? Was it one? Was it two? All of those things. You start at x naught, then you draw up to uh, g of x, or, or the line you hit first. Then you go horizontally over to the next one, and then you sort of go down across between them after that. So you go up to one, across to the other, and you keep going vertically and horizontally and alternating which ones you do um, and obviously all of the values will marry up as well as you can see so we've got x1 there we've got x2 x3 so whatever values you are getting for that you will illustrate it and you can see it makes a little staircase shape that's kind of something you're just gonna have to make up in the exam I'm afraid it's it's not something that you can really learn um, you just sort of need to know that you you know, do this example that you've seen today, get it in your head, and sort of hope that something similar comes up on the exam, because from from reading the book, the, all the examples are pretty much the same as this, so it's going to be pretty similar, um, and it'll only be a few marks anyway, if, it, if, you, if you don't get how to do it. I don't really get the point of it, but hey-ho. It's on the spec, and you have to know it. So there you go. That is that. I'm sorry this one hasn't probably been as helpful, but introducing you to the ideas of these things is probably um, the best I can do, really. I, I, I don't have any other ideas of how I can get this across to you rather than just show you it and you know, hope that some of it goes in. I hope you understand that. If you have found it helpful, then make sure you leave a like. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this. If you really understand this, maybe put your own little explanation in uh, down below and some other people might read that. Um, but yeah, uh, this lesson, as well as any others, uh, are on the Google Drive in the descriptions to the individual videos. So go and check them out if you need to go through anything at your own pace. And we have, uh, I think, about four lessons to go in the FSMQ. And they'll all go a lot smoother than this. I promise you that. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. And, of course, best of luck with your exam.